It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. When you're trying to help an organization really embrace Agile, sometimes one of the key things that's the hardest to do is get everyone on the same page. Now, I know what you're thinking. It should be easy to put together a list of standards or something that we're all going to follow, and it should be easy for us to just all get on the same page and uh, move forward effectively. Uh, Many organizations create agile centers of excellence or they run things through their project management office. There's just so many different ways and techniques and tips and tricks that people use to be effective. But what I've found is that in lots of organizations, we still have hidden agendas that exist. So if you're trying to create a thriving organization where collaboration, productivity, and innovation flourishes, one of the most challenging aspects is the presence of these underhand agendas. Um, Many of these are hidden and people say, well, if we just eliminate those agendas or find ways to not focus on those and focus on everyone, our overall goal and mission, we'd have a lot fewer problems. But sometimes that seems to be the actual problem. Let me explain. When someone comes in with an agenda or when someone comes in with an idea, whether it's they've been left out of an idea collaboration session or whether it's a brainstorming thing or whether they just know that something could be better a different way, the list goes on and on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we find is that it's impossible to eliminate these agendas because there's always someone who may have an opposing view or maybe a different view or maybe an additional view. And I think that sometimes when you acknowledge and understand that these things do exist and that it perpetuates from leadership all the way down to the team, it helps you focus on what the intent of the agenda is, how it might impact everyone around, and um, how we can deal with or manage or govern those agendas. Now, it should be pretty obvious that personal agendas, hidden agendas, they, they all have impact, right? And these things could significantly influence dynamics, communication, decision-making. When people start prioritizing their own needs over the organizational goals, this is certain to spark conflict, damage. Uh, It'll definitely slow down or hinder progress. These types of agendas are interesting, but only when acknowledged and addressed. The problem is most organizations don't bother addressing the agendas and they try to dance their way around those and still create productive work in a productive work environment without paying attention to the set agenda. So I think the bigger question becomes, okay, yes, Lee, we know we need to address this. We know it could be an issue, but why does it even happen to begin with? Well, as soon as your organization gets to be more than just a handful of people, The diversity of the individuals, their motivations, their aspirations, and their goals, it all comes in, especially if you bring in people from any different companies that are similar to yours, and they've all done Agile differently in the past. So it only takes two people to disagree, but when your organization grows in size, sometimes you might have eight, 10, or 12 different opinions, sometimes even more. And I think that sometimes these agendas or quotients may be hidden to you or not so transparent. But to the people who are on the ground doing the work, it's a really awkward, uncomfortable dance where they're walking on eggshells or not ready to talk about the elephant in the room. And they they want to address these, but they, they don't know how. So many times I hear organizations who bring me in and they say, one of our things that we need to do is we need to eliminate personal agendas. We need to get rid of them altogether. We need to get rid of these external factors. And the first words out of my mouth are, are you sure you want to do that? And let me explain, because sometimes the people with the agenda aren't necessarily the problem. Humans need to have their own motivation, interest, and aspirations in order for them to excel. They need to base these things on needs, expectations, assumptions, you know, reason, thought to reason. If you try to remove all that, you'll turn your entire team and your entire organization into a product without any culture without any soul. They'll be driven to work, but they'll feel massively constrained and people will hate what they do. So I think part of this is how do you balance 
independent thinking and the ability for people to speak openly, radical candor communication with having these agendas that exist. And I think the best way to address this is to think in terms of technical debt. Now, I know what you're thinking. How is this going to tie to technical debt? I'm going to call this communication debt. Uh, The definition of communication debt could be a conversation that we should have had, but we didn't have. We failed to have it. Because sometimes either someone is afraid to say something because they don't want to upset someone else, or other times it's just because we know we should say something, but we don't want to be the one to say it. And I think that if we get into the habit of allowing these brainstorming, differences of opinion, top five ideas, uh, the the whole inclusiveness and, and being rational about everyone having a seat at the table and giving people the ability to you know, to advocate for their opinion. I think that that's going to be the solution that's going to help us get the furthest uh, down the track with regard to business agility. So when managed effectively, you can leverage diversity, inclusiveness, equity, and all those good things to drive organizational growth and success. And I think that's where a lot of organizations find themselves today, right in that, right in that sweet spot. So Instead of trying to stifle these agendas, I'm almost promoting the growth of these agendas and understanding how to process the agenda. Acknowledge that things exist. Acknowledge that there are differences. Acknowledge that these things, if unaddressed, could affect daily operations, could affect decision-making processes. And instead of trying to hide everything, we need to come in with a better attitude of help me understand so that we can understand why people might have a difference in opinion and how that's going to impact us. So I think overarching, the message I'm trying to share here is just <coughs> we need to make certain that we uh, we first acknowledge that it's okay for people to have a difference in opinion, and we need to acknowledge that radical communication, radical candor communication exists, and that our workplace is a place of psychological safety. And as soon as we do those three things, we're going to find that people are going to be more willing to share new ideas. Our company is going to live and grow. And people are just going to be overall happier with the outcome of everything that's happening. So there you have it. I hope that you appreciated this. If you have a question or you have a concern or you have a topic you want us to talk about, feel free to reach out to us. Learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.